Oh, Prince Philip will uh, also be remembered as one of the first people in the public eye to champion the cause of conservation. For nearly 20 years, he was president of the World Wildlife Fund, now the Worldwide Fund for Nature. And even after stepping down, he remained an active campaigner, as our science and environment editor David Shookman reports. Nature was one of Prince Philip's great loves, and the need to conserve it became a lifelong passion. He fought not just for endangered species, but for the whole of the natural world. We depend on being part of the web of life. We depend on every other living thing on this planet, just as much as they depend on us. From his earliest official visits around the globe, this one to Antarctica, wildlife was always a theme. He used his position to inspire younger generations. In this lecture for 2,000 children, many of the pictures were his. I don't think I'll tell you which are mine. <laughs> but if you ever see a very bad one, you'll know. An emerging theme was our responsibility. If we as humans have got this power of, of life and death, not, not just life and death, but extinction and survival of, of other species of life, then we ought to exercise it with, with, um, with, with some sort of moral sense. I mean, what, why make something extinct if we don't have to? He authored or contributed to a series of dramatically titled books about threats to nature. And he took advantage of his access to governments the world over. He helped to set up the Worldwide Fund for Nature, and he led it for years. On a visit to the pandas in China, he highlighted the need to save them and their habitats. And he went live on television with David Attenborough to make that point. The panda range has been squeezed between mountains on one side and human encroachment on the other. It is important to conservation worldwide. It's been absolutely huge. You can go anywhere in the world, you know, and he will know where you have to make the connection, where you have to put the pressure, what you have to do. Uh, and he's very uh, practical in those terms. But he didn't always help himself. There was the tiger. In the 60s, he joined tiger hunts. And he once shot a tiger in India. This image was to remain controversial. It was later said that tigers weren't considered endangered back then. But Prince Philip did have his own distinct views. He supported fox hunting and the shooting of game birds, which set him at odds with many environmentalists. There is an advantage in, in people wanting to shoot because if you have a game species, you want it to survive because you want to have some more next year. It's exactly like a farmer. You want to crop it. You don't want to, you don't want to exterminate it. So this was a man with his own brand of environmental concern and he did not like being labelled. Would you describe yourself as, as a green? As green? No. No. Why not? Well, because I think that, that there's, there's a difference between being concerned for the conservation of nature and um, being a bunny hugger. When I was president of WWF, I got more letters about people, the way animals were treated in zoos, than about any concern for the, for the survival of a, of a species. But people can't get their heads around the idea of, survi of a species surviving. And as far back as 1970, with a young Prince Charles by his side, he was typically forthright about the need to be realistic in the fight for nature. After all, even naturalists drive cars occasionally. And having accepted that, we must go a step further and recognize that compromises have to be reached. Disagreement is inevitable, but the groups must go on meeting because we have simply got to hammer out answers to problems which are going to affect all life in these islands for generations to come. In many ways, Prince Philip was ahead of his time, using his fame as a royal to raise awareness of conservation, an early environmentalist who did not want to be called that, a unique campaigner for a cause that's ever more relevant. David Shookman, BBC News.